All right, so we are going to look at how to solve trig equations. We have simplified identities, we have proven identities, which were in the form of equations, but now we're going to actually solve some. So to start off, we are going to graph, it says graph the function f of x equals sine of x below. So if we're going to graph that, we're going to go from 0 to 2 pi, there's also an intercept at pi, we're up here at 1, down here at negative 1, and we can sketch this in, right? And it continues on in both directions, right? All right, so then it says, give the solutions to the equation sine of x equals 1 half on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So we're only going from 0 to 2 pi, even though the graph keeps on going. And if you understand, like, f of x equals y, right? So y equals sine of x. So when I say the sine of x equals 1 half, that means y equals 1 half. So you have a line of y equals 1 half right there. Basically, anytime you do something like that, it's a system of equations. Where does the line and the curve intersect? And so from 0 to 2 pi, how many answers are we going to have? 2, OK? We have an answer here and an answer here. Now, this is different than um, the way I asked you questions at the door. When we first looked at how to do that, like inverse, like if I got sine of x equals 1 half, so then I want the sine inverse of 1 half, just the straight up sine inverse of 1 half is only going to have one answer, and it has to go from negative pi halves to pi halves. But when sine of x equals 1 half and you're solving it on an interval, you could have more than one answer. We're not looking at it strictly as a function that is restricted, okay? So it's going to happen twice, happen here and happen here. Well, this goes from 0 to pi halves, so this is my first quadrant angle. And then from pi halves to pi, this is a second quadrant angle. And sine is positive in the first and second quadrant, so that should make sense. So what is the sine inverse of 1 half? Sine inverse of 1 half, what is that? Pi 6, OK. So it is pi 6. From 0 to pi halves, I get a pi 6. But then once I hit pi halves and I'm coming back down, I hit that 1 half again for y. I'm no longer at pi 6. What's my second quadrant <coughs> pi 6 angle? <coughs> 5 pi over 6. Because those two angles there, from 0 to 2 pi, I would get a positive 1 half for a sine value. Does that make sense to you? We good? OK. George. All right, so then it says give the solutions to the equation, same equation, on the interval from negative infinity to infinity. So if I didn't restrict it from 0 to 2 pi, how many answers am I going to have? An infinite amount, right? Because it just keeps on going and going and going and going. OK, so we know that the, the graph is going to repeat itself, which means that I'm going to have this point is going to happen again down there going up, right? And then it's going to happen again coming down. Well, this point in particular right here, when I go down there, like when it comes over here, how far away is that on the x-axis? Like how far before this repeats? 2 pi. 2 pi. And how far before this one repeats? 2 pi. And same thing going negative. We agree with that? 2 pi away because that is our period. All right, so that means here then that x is equal to pi 6 plus 2 pi times n and 5 pi 6 plus 2 pi times n. Remember that? And what does n have to be? An integer has to be an element of the integers. Because it, it has to be a whole number, positive or negative. Um, when we write these, I'm not going to make you write n as an element of the integers ever and over again. That's just going to kind of be an understood thing as we solve these when we have to do it. Okay, so it says the trigonometric equation can have, the trig equation can have one solution, no solution, or several solutions up to infinity, depending on the defined interval. So you have to pay attention to what your defined interval is. So just like anything else when you're solving, you're trying to get x by itself. But you got to get the trig function by itself first. Okay, so that's your first goal. So let's look at number one. I've got 5 times the cosine of x plus square root of 2 equals 3 cosine x. And I'm going from negative infinity to infinity. All right, so I need to solve this. So I need to get all my x's on one side, right? I've got 5 over here and 3 over here. 
I can move these five over here by doing what? Subtraction. So this gives me the square root of 2 equals, if I subtract 5 cosine x over here, what am I going to end up with? Negative 2 cosine x, exactly. So that means that square root of 2 over 2, that would be negative, is equal to the cosine of x. Everybody with me so far? So now I'm going from negative infinity to infinity, which means I have to take the entire circle into account and then it just repeats, right? And so negative square root of 2 over 2, what is the cosine inverse of that? It's pi fourths, right? Okay, so the cosine inverse of negative square root of 2 over 2 gives me pi four, uh, 3 pi fourths, sorry. And then where else is cosine negative? What quadrant? The third. So that means that x is equal to 3 pi fourths and what? 5 pi fourths. Oh, God, I totally screwed that up. Okay, what did I forget to do? The plus, the 2 pi n stuff. Sorry, I'm not bringing a brain fart already. Okay, so 3 pi fourths plus 2 pi n, and then 5 pi fourths plus 2 pi n. Right. Well, not if it wasn't the whole circle. It doesn't go from negative infinity to infinity. Yes. No. It's because we need an infinite amount of answers, and we don't have time to sit here and write them all. Right. Nobody does. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Sorry, I messed up so soon. All right, number two. So I've got to get all my thetas on one side and everything that's not a theta on the other side. Are the tangent, three tangent thetas going to cancel each other out? No. So I can add three tangent theta both sides. It's going to give me six tangent theta. Then I can subtract two times the square root of three over to the other side. And what's that going to give me? Six square root of three. That means tangent theta is equal to square root of 3. So I need to take the entire circle into account. The tangent inverse of the square root of 3 is what? Pi thirds, right? Where else would I get a positive square root of 3? What quadrant? The third, OK? So I'm going to have pi thirds plus, is it 2 pi n? It's just pi n. And then 2 pi thirds or 3 pi thirds, what is this here? It's pi thirds, but it's, it's 4. You go to 3 pi thirds and add one more. It's 4 pi thirds. 4 pi thirds plus pi n. But let me ask you, uh -huh. because the, um, because the period for tangent is pi, not 2 pi. It repeats every pi. Does that make sense? Um, so let me ask you this then. What is um, pi thirds plus pi? It'd be four pi thirds, right? So would I even have to write the second one? No, but you don't have to overanalyze it. Having both of them there is fine. I just want you to understand that it really I could just have the first one and that'd be fine. But I'm afraid if we do that, it'll just confuse everything. So. Everybody good? All right, let's look at number three. I've got cosecant of alpha minus six over four equals negative one. So what would be the first thing I do? Multiply by four. Multiply by four. So cosecant of alpha minus six equals negative four. So then cosecant of alpha is equal to 2. Now, you're probably not that comfortable yet with your reciprocals, and that's okay. What is the reciprocal of cosecant? Well, the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. So cosecant is 1 over sine, but the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. So if I make this sine of alpha, then that's going to be equal to 1 half. This still is going from negative infinity to infinity, so that's the entire circle. So what's the sine inverse of 1 half? Pi 6. And then that's going to be plus 2 pi n. So we got pi 6 here. Where else is sine positive? 
5 pi 6 over here. 5 pi 6 plus 2 pi n. And we're done. Okay. Any questions at all? All right. Let's look at number five. We're going to skip number four. Um, 3 tangent A equals tangent A minus 2. So do you agree that I can subtract a tangent from both sides? Yes. So I'll get 2 tangent A equals negative 2. So tangent A is equal to negative 1. So this time I'm not going from negative infinity to infinity, but I am going from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so I'm using that entire circle there. Now if I ask you at the door, what's the tangent inverse of negative 1? You're going to tell me it's what? Negative pi fourths, right? And that is, a, that is a legit answer, but that negative pi fourths there, you're going to have to call it what to get in this interval? 7 pi fourths, right? And then where else is tangent negative? Second quadrant. So what's your second quadrant pi fourths angle? 3 pi fourths, right? So that means that A is equal to 3 pi fourths and 7 pi fourths. Okay. Any questions about that? All right, let's look at number six. So um, I can take and subtract 8 from both sides and get 4 times sine squared u equals 3. So sine squared u equals 3 fourths. So what does the sine of u equal? Square root of 3 over 2. Do I agree with that? I put a big fat x on that. Why? What? Plus or minus. You cannot forget plus or minus. There are two answers there. Okay? And so this one, our answers only go from pi to 3 pi halves. Right? We're only looking in the third quadrant there. So is sine positive or negative in the third quadrant? It's going to be negative. So you would think that it was like you can't even answer it if you left off that plus or minus. You cannot forget plus or minus. You absolutely cannot forget that. Okay, so the positive square root of 3 over 2 doesn't even do anything for me. I'm just going to have one answer, and what's the sine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2 in the third quadrant? It's a pi thirds angle, in the third quadrant, what would it be? Four pi thirds, good. All right, any questions at all? Okay. Now let's factor. Look at number seven. Four cosine squared x minus one equals zero. And so is this a special case of anything? Difference of squares. So I can factor this real easily and quickly. And this gives me two cosine x plus one, two cosine x minus one. It's the exact same equation solving and factoring that you've been doing forever. There's just sine functions in there, or, or trig functions in there. So that means when I go to solve these then, and I set each one of those equal to zero, I'm going to get cosine of x equals negative one-half, and cosine of x equals one-half. I'm going from zero to two pi here, taking the whole circle into account, which means in this particular case, I'm going to have how many answers? Four, because I have two positive and two negative, right? So the cosine inverse of one half is what? It's pi thirds. So I'm going to get pi thirds, and I need the pi thirds angle in each quadrant. So it's pi thirds, two pi thirds, then what? Four pi thirds, and five pi. Okay. 
questions? All right. So let's look at number eight. Could I just start off by dividing both sides by the cotangent of x to get rid of it? No. That you just lose, you completely lose a solution that way. So big fat no on that one. Um, but if I'm going to factor, I need to get it equal to zero. So I'm going to get zero equals cotangent x times sine squared x minus cotangent x. Now can I do something legally? Yes, I can factor it out, right? So I get zero equals cotangent x times sine squared x minus one. And that is a difference of squares, something you should be able to recognize quickly and handle quickly and correctly. So I get cotangent of x times sine x plus one times sine x minus one. All right, so now I got it factored. I'm gonna get cotangent x equals zero, sine of x equals negative one, and sine of x equals positive one. All right, well, again, cotangent, you may or may not really know those, but tangent is the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of zero? Undefined. Technically, you cannot take the tangent inverse of undefined, but if you understand what's happening, you can easily figure out what the answer is there. So here, I'm only going from pi to 2 pi. You've got to pay attention to your intervals. So where is tangent undefined from pi to 2 pi? Yeah, it's pi halves and negative pi halves or at 3 pi halves, right? So I need to get my answers in, in order, so I'm just going to write out here 3 pi halves is one of my answers. Then sine, when is sine negative 1? That's a 3 pi halves, right? And then positive 1 where? It's at pi halves, but we don't use that, right? So I only have how many answers? 1. And my answer is x equals 3 pi halves. Any questions at this point? All right, let's look at number 9. What can I do here first in number 9? Factor out a tangent, good. So tangent u leaves me with 3 tangent u minus the square root of 3 equals 0. Oh, three, I left off my u. u. There we go. And so then I'm factored, so I get tangent u equals 0 and tangent u equals square root of 3 over 3. I only want to go from pi to 3 pi halves, so I'm only looking at the third quadrant there. So where is tangent 0? At pi. It's at 0 and at pi. So I'm here at pi, and then square root of 3 over 3, is, it pos is tangent positive in the third quadrant? Yes. And what's the tangent inverse of the square root of 3 over 3? It's pi 6, so I need my pi 6 angle in the third quadrant, which is 7 pi 6. Good. So u is equal to so, um, pi and then 7 pi 6. Any questions at all? All right. Okay, so number 10. Look at what you've got there, and what do you think I should have to do first? Yeah. If I'm going to start factoring things, what do I want to do before I factor? Make it equal to zero. Otherwise, I'm going to have to put everything back and then do it again. So I can move this over, right? So this will give me sine x times secant x plus what? Well, if I have 2 squared to 2 and I subtract a square root of 2, what am I left with? square root of 2 times the sine of x equals 0. Okay, Because I had two of them, I subtracted one away. Now I can factor out. So now I'll factor out a sine x. That leaves me with secant x plus the square root of 2 equals 0. So that means that sine x equals 0 and secant x equals negative square root of 2. But instead of secant, 
I can use cosine. So cosine of x would be the reciprocal of this, which would be negative 1 over the square root of 2, which is negative square root of 2 over 2. And I'm looking at the interval from 0 to pi. So where is sine 0 from 0 to pi? 0 and pi. So I got it here at 0, and I got it here at pi. And then cosine is negative in the second quadrant. So what's the cosine inverse of negative square root of 2 over 2? 3 pi fourths. So x is equal to 0. 3 pi fourths and pi. Yes, they should be in order from least to greatest. Okay, questions? Anything? All right, so let's look at number 11. What should I do on number 11? Yeah, set it equal to zero. So cosecant squared theta plus cosecant theta minus 2 equals 0. So I'm going to have to factor this, like just straight up factor it, just like if it was x squared plus x minus 2. doesn't make it any harder because it's cosecant. So this will give me two binomials. So I get cosecant theta and cosecant theta, and then I'll have a 2 and a 1. Which one of those two is negative? The 1. So the 1 is negative, the 2 is positive. Now I can solve them, and I'm going to get cosecant theta equals negative 2, and cosecant theta equals 1. I would rather have it in sine, right? So that means the sine theta is equal to what? Negative 1 half, and sine theta is equal to 1. And then I'm going from 3 pi halves to 2 pi, so I'm only looking in the fourth quadrant, right? Sine inverse of negative 1 half is going to be negative pi 6, technically, but what do we call it? Pi 11 pi 6, right? And then um, sine, when is sine 1? at pi halves, and that, it'll be negative 1 at 3 pi halves, so I don't even get to use it, right? That one doesn't just, doesn't even give me anything. And so theta is just equal to 11 pi over 6. Questions? We good? All right. Let's look at number 12. So this one is set equal to 0. Is this one, you think we can factor this? Let's look at what we got here. It's 2 sine squared, so one of these is 2 sine of alpha, the other one is sine of alpha. This is a 2, so one of these two numbers is a 1 and one of them is a 2. One of them is positive, one of them is negative. The middle part's got to give me a 3, so I'm thinking the 2 has to get multiplied with the 2, and the 1 would have to be right here, so I get a 4 and a 1, which would give me the 3. Which one of these is positive? The 2, plus 2, minus 1. Or you can factor by grouping, or you can do whatever. You just have to be able to factor it. Um, so then I've got sine of alpha is equal to 1 half, and sine of alpha is equal to negative 2. Going from 0 to 2 pi, which is the whole circle. So sine is 1 half or the sine inverse of 1 half is pi 6. And what else would I get? 5 pi 6, right? And then what about this? Just give me anything? No, I can't take the sine inverse of that. So alpha is just equal to pi 6 and 5 pi 6. Any questions at all? Okay, then let's look at 13. I have secant to the fourth x minus 4 secant squared x plus 3 equals secant squared x minus 1. All right, so I'm thinking I just need to go ahead and set it equal to 0. 
So this will give me secant to the fourth x, and then that'll be minus 5 secant, if I can write, secant squared x, hang on, there you go, secant squared x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, so it is to the fourth power. It doesn't look real pretty, but is it something I can factor? Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to get two binomials, and this is going to give me secant squared x and secant squared x. I could either have a 2 and a 2 and a, or a 1 and a 4. What do you think it's going to be? A 1 and a 4, and they both have to be negative. Now what are these? They're difference of squares, right? Okay, so you can do difference of squares, but here's another thing that you can do when difference of squares comes up, as long as you don't mess it up. I could just stop here, because sometimes you have to stop here if, it does, if it's not a perfect square, and say that secant squared x is equal to 1, and secant squared x is equal to 4. If that's true, then the secant, oh my gosh, why can't I write that word? The secant of x is equal to what? plus or minus 1. See, when you do the difference of squares, you get the plus or minus because you have two things there. When you do it this way, if you forget to do the plus or minus, you're toast, right? You just, I mean, you cannot forget that that's a thing. So then you get secant of x is equal to plus or minus 2. Make sense? Okay, so then I can make this into cosine. So the cosine of x is equal to plus or minus 1. And the cosine of x is equal to plus or minus 1 half. I'm going from pi to 2 pi right here. Okay, so cosine is a positive 1 where? But a positive 1 specifically at 0, but we're not going to call it 0. What are we going to call it? 2 pi. And it's negative 1 here at pi, right? Negative 1 half, well, the cosine inverse of just 1 half is pi thirds, right? So here I'm going to get a negative pi thirds angle. What's my pi thirds angle in this quadrant? 4 pi thirds. And then I'm going to get a positive 1 half over here, and this is 5 pi thirds, right? So x is equal to pi, 4 pi thirds, 5 pi thirds, and 2 pi. There you go. All right. Questions? Anything? You don't necessarily have to like label the circle like this, but it helps me get them in order. I mean, otherwise, I'm, you know, you can at least make sure you got everything. All right, number 14. Can this one be factored? How? By grouping. All right, go ahead and get started on factoring that one by grouping while I hand out the assignment, and then I'll work through it with you. So, you agree with that one for the th first one? I can factor out a tangent squared y, and then I can factor out a negative 3? Yes? Okay, good. So then that leaves me with tangent squared y minus 3 times tangent of y plus 1. So then I get tangent squared y equals 3, which means that the tangent of y equals what? Plus or minus square root of 3. Good. And then tangent y equals negative 1. 
All right, and I'm going from 0 to pi here. All right, well, where is tangent a positive square root of 3? Uh, pi thirds, right? Where is it a negative square root of 3? 2 pi thirds. All right, where would tangent be negative 1 here? In the second quadrant, and it's the pi what angle? Pi fourths angle, second quadrant, what is that? 3 pi fourths. That means that y is equal to pi thirds, 2 pi thirds, and 3 pi fourths. And there you go. Okay. Any questions at all? Are we good? Awesome. So go ahead and get that put into your ISN, and you got about 10 minutes left to get started on this. Ask me questions if you have them.